The Audi's hurt. Let's see what's going on with it. My money is leaning on an internal failure of that uh, driver's side front shock. So, part two of the Audi video. Let me show you what crazy stuff I'm about to do to get this thing back on the road. Watch with me. Nobody hates a misdiagnosis more than I do. So what I'm going to do, take it to the next step, I'm going to remove this fender liner as well so I can have a better look at all of the suspension components as I bounce up and down. Now there are about 30 of these uh, T30 screws, so no shortage of that. Almost all of them are out. There are two that are just spinning with the lock nut on the back side of it. So let's try to see if we can get a peek behind there. It's a hidden one. That was fun. If you're removing this fender liner, there's one hidden behind the brake line. So just be careful. There's nothing special about working on an R8. Well, there is. But as far as tackling it over any other car, you just have to be careful. So, biggest piece of advice I would give you. So on closer inspection, what I've done is I've taken this, uh, I've taken the shroud out, the, uh, the fender liner, and I've unbolted the top and the bottom just to try to get it out and see what's going on. Here's what I'm seeing. And if you look real close, you'll see that this, uh, this nut here that's supposed to secure the, the rest of the shock to it, it's, it's crooked. So it almost looks like the shock has come apart at the top. So it's really difficult to see. I'm going to use a little pry bar in there so you can see what I see. And hopefully you come to the same conclusion as I have. So take a look real close. See, look, the shock is moving, but not that part. So, I think we're dealing with a, uh, a blown apart shock right now. And it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get this out of the way because it wants to expand and take up whatever type of slack I give it. So I may have to come into a situation where I have to unbolt the, the upper and lower um, control arms to get the entire suspension to sag enough to get this out. but good sign on narrowing down what the issue is and hopefully this means we can just reuse this once i've tightened it down and make sure everything looks good so here goes the reason why you ask why i would spend more on this car now before you get all excited and think wow i can buy an audi r8 for the price of a used forerunner nothing all right so here's what we have going on here this is our coilover pops off nice and easy so once the spring is on there and then the spring hat goes on there is a, a rod that goes in here kind of like so supposed to be straight but clearly not and then this these extra pieces will go on top of that and you know it'll have some adjustment here in this collar so so what it seems like happened is this sheared off of this and it caused a condition where this is what I'm hearing as I'm lifting up and down on the suspension. So 
it looks like we do have an internal failure of the coilover and we need to get it over to get it over to scale so they can uh they can help me get it back on the road so glad we figured out what the issue is bummer is it's going to take a while to get it back up and running but that's what this channel is all about so glad we figured it out I'll, uh, I'll have to do something to get this into a position where it can sit until I can reach out to the folks. So let's button it back up to some degree and get it in a safe spot. Here it goes. So my scale Alpine shock absorber broke right here. It just sheared right off. So I'm in a situation where I need to be able to move this thing around, but I just can't. Uh, if I lower it anymore, I won't be able to get the jack out and there's gonna be nothing for the suspension to rest on because the shock basically sets the right height. It, all the force is applied to it through to the lower control arm. So. It bolts in right here and it connects right down there by that open hole right here. And based on its length, it picks up and down the car. So taking a look at what I have here, uh, I'm not gonna be able to find this, especially Saturday, Sunday. I need to be able to move this thing around. I gotta get the Buick back in. I got stuff to work on. So I am going to take this air shock from my Harley and put it on the R8. Yes, I'm crazy as hell, I know, but if my reasoning is sound, I'll be able to adjust the height of it and be able to move the car with it on there. So let's get this off. We'll take some measurements. We'll get it on the car. So I've always been a strong proponent in form follows function. And what that means is that if it's intended for its purpose, then we can do it. And the shock that I showed you off of the Harley, it's not meant for a Harley Davidson at all. It's meant for an early model Corvette. And the fact that it's able to work on this Harley just fine says, hey, just because it's not in the list of um, vehicle compatibility charts does not mean you can't adapt something for it to work. Um, the great part is I feel like that shock is more in line with this R8 than it would be for that bike. Especially if you contemplate the, the weight of the vehicle. Now, it was going over the rear of the Corvette and, okay, no engine over the rear of a Corvette. Same thing with the Saudi, no weight over the, no engine over the front. So I feel pretty comfortable and confident in its ability to work, especially for the short time until I can find out what scale has to say about these shocks and how long it'll take to get it over here. So at first glance, it's by no means a permanent solution. It's just so we can get the suspension off of the ground and move it around. So with that, I cleared out the garage a little bit. I can show you all what we got next. So I was initially concerned about these uh, bushings and how big they're going to be, if they're going to be able to fit this bolt and call it divine intervention or fate. Yeah, so boom, top and bottom work perfectly well. So if I need another sign to go in this direction, this is probably it. Let's get it bolted up. So looking at it, the top and bottom have about a finger's worth of thickness that needs to be taken up so that you can remove the slack in between it bouncing around like so. So what I'll do is I'll try and take a look at what we have existing. And I also have a couple of parts pins I can take a look through 
and see if there's enough washer material to, to make a bit. All right, so here's where we're at with the car. The replacement shock is installed. I have the line coming out to my Vi Air air compressor, and I have my power and ground leads right here. So I'm using my power probe to apply power and ground to it just to see if the suspension is going to raise without struggle. Now it's almost, it's pretty much empty right now, so it's going to take a moment for it to raise, but let's see what it does. some food some air leaking I'm not gonna bolt it down but it's just gonna rattle for a bit okay it's still leaking right around here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this to get to a fresh point, and we'll try again. Third time's a charm. 